Hi, everyone. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about AI, how to use it, how we're already using it, and some things to think about. So I wanted to start with how we are already using AI in our lives through texting and email, auto-correct and predictive text. So if you write a word, it will automatically correct it. Sometimes it corrects the wrong word. So you're trying to say one thing and it automatically corrects with something else. Sometimes with predictive language, such as if you start writing HA, it might think you're writing happy birthday. And so you have the option to use the predictive text. Another way that we use AI already is in our Google searches. Sometimes we'll start looking something up and it will predict the rest of our query or what we're looking for. Again, sometimes it's correct, sometimes it's not. And even right now, if we look something up, a topic, at the very top, if we've allowed it to, there may be some AI text language already there giving you an answer that it has found from multiple sources found in your computer. We also see it in terms of apps with social media, YouTube plugins. There might already be uh, some ways that it uses AI and we're able to take advantage. Even in this little video I'm creating, I'm using Zoom to create this video and I could use AI language for any meeting notes if I had other people with me on this video. In terms of shopping, Amazon gives us suggestions and it looks at what we've looked for before, what we've purchased before, and it gives us suggestions as to what they think we might want. In terms of writing support, there's Grammarly and citation generators, spelling and grammar checks that will take a look at your writing and fix things right away. Even in Google Docs, if you have misspelled something or Google thinks you have, it underlines it in red and it lets you know that there's a misspelling there. And there are other ways. So I'm sure there's things that I've not included here, but I encourage you to be thinking about other ways we're already using AI. I did want to give you a brief definition of AI so that you understand what it is and what we're talking about specifically here, because it is a really large topic. So we're talking about specific AI tools that are large language models that rely on input and are both adaptive and formulaic. So the goals of these tools are des to design and create human conversation or writing. So it might adapt to your specific situation or what you tend to look up and what you tend to write, or it's very formulaic in terms of it will give the same thing to everybody based on the topic. It is a very quickly changing and developing technology, and it's going to continue to improve in quality as more people use it and as it develops. AI tools, the way they work is they scrape the internet, they look for information and they put it together in one place. For example, again, generating ideas, instructions, steps for a process, general information about a topic and surface level applications. And some AI tools that we could take a look at and some that I encourage you to maybe look at, practice using, and see what you think. Uh, Perplexity AI, this is one of my favorites because it gives resources uh, for what they have shared with you. There's also ChatGBT, that's the one that came out first in terms of being most popular and most discussed. You could take a look at that and then Google Bard. So it's really important to understand what AI tools can and cannot do. A few things that AI tools tend to do well, it tends to note grammar and correctness fairly well. Uh, it can give you some organization and structure. It does a good job at generating ideas and lists and outlines. It may help us to elaborate if we're stuck and it might help us consider counter arguments. So if we have an idea and we may say, what might people who disagree with this idea think? 
But there are some things that AI tools don't do well, such as always giving us accurate information. So on the internet, there is accurate and inaccurate information, and it's hard to tell the difference between it. And so when these uh, AI tools are getting information, they're not looking to see what's accurate and what's inaccurate. They're just bringing it all together and pretending that it is. So a lot of times we can get caught with inaccurate information. It's not very good at giving us current knowledge. It looks backwards, but more currently, it does not give us the most current um, information. It's not good at being equitable. And what do I mean by being equitable is that it doesn't share everybody's voice. It does not consider diverse voices in terms of race, ethnicity, gender, economic class. So it only gets what's there, what tends to float to the top. And a lot of times the things that float to the top are written by bigger corporations who are able to give money towards um, getting that spot in the internet. It's also doesn't do a good job at citing real sources. It does not write with an authentic voice. A lot of times we read something that is written by AI and it sounds very generic. It may have some good information. It might be written correctly, but it does not have the voice of the speaker. Anyone could have written it. It tends to be a little bit more bland and dry. And also it does not do a good job at writing at the depth required for the collegiate level. So you're here in college and you're expected to write on very specific things at a very specific depth based on what your professor is asking you to do. And AI is not capable of doing that. So if a teacher says, I think you have been using AI, a lot of times they're looking at the fact that it's not very deep and there's no voice. It sounds so generic. So it is important to understand though that AI is here to stay and it is important to be AI literate. So let's look at a definition written by the Modern Language Association about what critical AI literacy is and what they stated last year in July of 2023 is this, by, a, by critical AI literacy, we mean not just how AI models work, but also about the risk, rewards, capacities, and complications of AI tools. Critical AI literacy is now part of digital literacy, and students and teachers should be made aware of bias and inaccuracy in model outputs and the particular vulnerability of students who may not have sufficient expertise to critically evaluate language model outputs, including seeing them as sentient, meaning that they may that we may look at what's written and see it as completely accurate, and we don't know how to look and see how to figure out whether something is accurate or not. So a group of faculty members came together and wrote some good suggestions about trying to figure out how to know whether something is accurate in terms of if you look it up on AI and, and what it produces. And it came up with an acronym here, EDIT, and it's asking you to evaluate determine, identify, and transform. And so what does that mean? Let's unpack this a little bit more deeply. It's important to evaluate your AI output for content or AI output content for language, facts, and structure. So some questions to look at, how can you determine whether a statement in the generative AI output is a fact or opinion? Are there specific indicators or cues to look for? And I will tell you when I was suggesting Perplexity AI is that they that particular tool has background resources that you can actually look up 
and that is really important. Are there any statements in generative AI output that seem unlikely or implausible? So does something seem like it could not be true? And if so, you should be looking up a little bit further and we'll talk about that a little bit more. So again, to determine accuracy and corroborate with sources. So that leads us into this idea. If there's statements that don't seem true, let's look up some more information. So a few questions here. Does the generative AI output provide evidence to support its statements? What kind of evidence is presented? Is it reliable? Is it credible? So can you find it elsewhere? And you've seen it multiple times. And who's sharing that information? What do they have to gain by that? Are there any statements in the AI generated text that need to be corroborated with additional sources or evidence? How can you how can you find and cite these sources? Again, making sure that you can look up these sources and then also continue to see if there's other sources that back it up. So source having additional sources, identifying those sources is super important. Also, our librarians are really important here because they have vetted the sources that are included in the library. So if you ever have questions about a particular source, you can ask them. In fact, I have asked them and they've helped me as well. How can you ensure that the information presented in the AI gener generative text is up to date and reflects the most current research and data on the topic. So like I said, AI tools don't necessarily give us the most recent information. It's unable to do that at this time. It just looks at the internet as a whole and things change over time. And the older you get, the more you're going to realize this, how things and attitudes and ideas change over time. But these um, large language models, these AI tools aren't able to distinguish the difference between attitudes that are maybe 50 years old or 20 years old versus ones that are maybe five years or less. We also need to identify, identify biases and misinformation in output. So again, we talk a little bit about this bias so some questions to ask is, does the text provide a limited or biased view of the topic? And how can I provide additional perspectives to, to balance the writing? So that's really important to ask and find out as well. Whose point of view is being shared? Are there any specific words or phrases in AI-generated text that suggest a particular bias or perspective? Are there any logical fallacies present, meaning are they saying something that's inaccurate and trying to persuade you to think that it's true? Um, and some fallacies such as circular reasoning or appeals to emotion. We're trying to get you to feel emotional about it and thus say something is true. The last is to transform. It's important to be able to transform the content to reflect adjustments and new findings. So some questions to ask, does the AI generated text sound like something a human would say or write? Why or why not? How does the AI generated text make you feel? Does it have an emotional impact? Why or why not? And can we provide a personal anecdote of expression to relate to the reader? So again, once you find information from these AI tools, it's important to look at these questions from this slide on edit. And I encourage you to keep this, not just for this class, but to keep it as you continue to look at information. I do want to share with you that I am going to have you use AI in some limited capacities in our class, but I wanna point out that there's going to be another lecture about how important it is for you to be able to do your own writing. And so we're at a place in time in our composition classes where I am asking you to really rely on you and your ideas. I want to know what it is that you think and say. I want to thank you very much for paying attention to this lecture. I encourage you to go back and stop and listen to things a little bit more if as needed. 
And also, there may be some up-to-date information that you'd like to share with me. By all means, contact me and share that with me. Thank you so much.